Welcome to Electro Online. Here's another very interesting viewer request video. It has to do with projectile motion. We're shooting an object straight up with an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. And they want to know what the average velocity is over the first six seconds. Now, since the initial velocity is only 40 meters per second and, and the acceleration to the gravity is almost a negative 10 meters per second squared, we realize that the object will reach maximum height and start coming back down. And so part of the part of the situation here, part of the difficulty is understanding whether or not they want us to calculate based on the vectorial perspective or the scalar perspective. And let me show you. If we think of it in terms of a vector quantity, then the displacement is only the difference for going from here to here. It doesn't care how it got to this point. It only takes the total displacement as this amount. But if we do it as a scalar, if we solve the problem as a scalar, and we just think, think about speed and distance, then the total distance traveled is all the way to the very top and then back down. So it does depend upon how they want us to look at the problem. So here, if we're looking at it as a vector, we need to take into account the velocity and the displacement. If we look at it as a scalar, we think about the speed and the distance. In both cases, the definition of the average velocity or the average speed, you can say that V average, if we're going to do it as a vector, that's going to be equal to the displacement and that's going to be a vector quantity divided by the time that it takes to do the total trip. If we solve it as a scalar quantity, then the average speed, V average, is going to be equal to the total distance divided by the time. So you can see that it does matter which way we do it. Now let's solve it in a way that we can solve it both ways at the same time and I'll show you why. We're going to do it graphically and we're going to draw, start out by drawing a velocity versus time graph. So here's the velocity and here's the time. Now, of course, we can think of it as a vector quantity. We can think of it as a scalar quantity. It doesn't matter, uh, but this is how we will do it. We start out at an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. So the units here are meters per second. The units here are going to be seconds. So the speed is going to decrease until we reach zero after a certain amount of time. We don't know how long that will take. And then as it goes back down, it now has negative velocity. It continues until six seconds have passed. So this will be six seconds right there, which means that this area here, because remember the area underneath the curve for a velocity versus time graph represents distance traveled. So this area right here of this triangle, A1, represents this distance right here. So this distance right here is represented by A1, and this distance right here, A2, well, A2 represents this distance right there, and so let's call that A2. Which means that if I work it out as a vector solution, then I need to subtract A2 from A1 to get the displacement. If I solve it as a scalar quantity, then I add the two distances together because then I care about the total distance traveled, not the total displacement. All right, so it all comes down to figuring out those areas underneath the curve. We know what the slope is equal to. The slope is equal to minus 9.8. And so that allows us to calculate this time right here. So I'll call this time one, which is the time from start from here until it reaches the maximum height. Okay, so let's figure that out. By definition, the slope is equal to the rise over the run. So in this case, the slope, which is g, or, nine, or minus 9.8, because it's a negative slope, is equal to the rise, which is a negative drop, negative 40, divided by the run, which is t1. So t1 equals negative 40, divided by minus 9.8. Now, of course, that will be in seconds. And with a calculator, we'll figure out what that's equal to. 40 divided by 9.8 is 2.0. Oh, well, let me do it again. 40 divided by 9.8 equals... 
okay? Which means that time two right here is going to be six minus that, so time two is equal to six minus time one, which is, so subtract that, plus six equals, that would be 1.9184, 9184 seconds. Okay, remember I keep a few extra non-significant figures just to, so I don't have, I have uh, errors, calculation errors. All right, now we need to find the areas. So let's find A1. A1 is equal to, since it's a triangle, one half the base times the height. And so that would be one half the base, which is T1, which is 4.0816, times the height, which is 40. So that will give us the area A1, which tells us how high the ball will go to reach its maximum height. So that means we multiply, let's see here, minus plus 6 equals times 20. That's uh, 81.63 meters. 81.63 meters. And then for A2, that's equal to 1 half the base times the height. So it's 1 half times 1.9184 times the height. Oh, we don't know the height yet. All right. Then again, we need to use the slope equation. So for to get this distance right here, so let's call this H2. So that means we need the slope, which is the rise over the run, which means that minus 9.8 is equal to the rise, which is a minus H2, divided by the run, which is the time, 1.9184. 1 so from that, H2 will be equal to the product of those two. All right. So we get 1.9184 times 9.8 equals 18.80. So it would be 18.80 uh, 18, 18 meters. There we go. So now we have that height, which we can plug in here. 18.80 and that gives us the distance traveled on the way down so we take that multiply that times 0.5 times 1.9184 equals and it'll be 18.03 meters 18.03 meters all right so now that we have both heights or both distances, A1 and A2, the distance on the way up and the distance on the way down. Now, as a vector solution, as a vector solution, we could say that the V average is equal to the displacement divided by the time. So, in this case, what is the displacement? Well, the displacement will be A1 minus A2, so it would be A1 minus A2, in a vector quantity divided by the total time, which is six seconds. So in this case, that will be, let's see, 81.63 meters minus 18.03 meters, all divided by six seconds. And so that would have to be in terms of, uh, in the meters per second, in the uh, y direction. Right, so we can think of it in the y direction since we want to solve it as a vector. So we have 81.63 minus 18.03. minus 18.03 equals 63.6. So it's equal to 63.6 meters in the y direction divided by 6 seconds. So divided by 6 equals and we get 10.6 meters per second in the y direction. So that's our average velocity as a vector. So that would be the average velocity as a vector. Now, as a scalar quantity, the average speed is going to be equal to the distance divided by the time. So in this case, we have to add the two together. So it'll be 81.63 meters plus 18.03 meters, all divided by six seconds. 
So in this case, we get 81.63 plus 18.03 equals. That gives us 99.66 meters divided by 6 seconds. And the average there would be 16.61 meters per second. Average velocity, average speed, not average velocity, but average speed. And so again, it depends how they wanted us to solve it. But either way, we can do it the exact same method. We use the, the uh, graphical method. We find the area underneath the curve. Either we add the two in order to get the speed, or we subtract A2 from A1 in order to get the velocity in terms of vector quantity. And that is how it's done. Could you solve this problem with kinematics? Could we solve this problem using equation kinematics? Yes, we could. The reason, <laughs> the reason why you did it this way is because you can graphically see what's going on with the solution. That's why I like this method. You like the kinematics bit better? You want me to do it the other way? Okay, I'll do it the other way in the next video. <laughs> but isn't that a, ni a nice way of looking at it graphically? Not necessarily. <laughs> okay. <laughs>